Hey, what's up guys? Daniel with Xhover here. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to assemble the Xhover R5X. This will also, uh, this video will be the same for the R5LX also. So if you have either the R5X or the R5LX, uh, this, this is the same thing. The only difference with the R5LX uh, frame is it's a little bit longer. So that's the only difference. Other than that, it goes together the same way. So let's open this package here. Get an Xhover sticker. Uh, this package you'll get your camera plate along with your top plate, bottom plate, and middle plate. And you'll notice this middle plate already has a press nuts installed. The reason we install them here is to make sure that you know they're on there snug and they're not going to move when you're screwing them down. So that's pretty nice. Um, you got your camera plates. Next, you have the new X Hover PDB. This PDB is redesigned from the older one. We had a lot of requests to do a 5 and 12 volt out. And we didn't just want to put a 5, 5 and 12 volt out, just whatever. We wanted a clean power. So it's all going to be clean power, the 12 volt and 5 volt. And along with all the pads, all the other pads, whatever you plug in, if you plug in a 4 cell, you're going to get a 4S out of all the rest of the pads, except for the 12 and 5 volt out. So that's it, a nice little matte finish. Uh, next you have your arms. The nice thing about these arms is you can place them either way, front or back, it's not going to matter. So there's a lot of other drones out there where you kind of have to know which arms go where. And these doesn't matter, front or back, it's going to work. Next you have your package uh, that includes your battery strap, uh, stickers, business cards, um, ESC stickers and an XT60 connector. Put that to the side. Last bag, you'll have your hardware pack. One thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure you keep your hardware separated. So it comes separated already. Um, so I would keep your PDB and FC standoffs and hardware separated from the rest just because the screws are a different length and you don't want to get those mixed up. So the first thing I like to do is mount the PDB onto the middle plate. So we'll start by taking all the PDB hardware out. This is also going to include the necessary hardware to mount your FC. So I know a lot of times people are frustrated when they get a frame and they have to go purchase something else to mount the PDB and FC and it just makes it a really hassle. So we kind of made it so you don't have to worry about that. Everything comes in the kit. So let's grab our PDB. So on the outside holes, you're going to use the M3 screws provided in the PDB hardware kit. And you want to, something you want to keep in mind, you want to make sure the press nuts are facing up to the PDB. So that gives you an idea. The next thing you want to get your nuts and then just screw them down to the, to the M3. So once you have all your screws and nuts in, this is what it should look like. Next step is mounting the PDB. And what I, I personally like to have the 5 and 12 volt facing forward, but you can have them facing back depending how you have your setup. Just mount the PDB down. Next, you want to get your nylon standoffs. Place those down. And there it is. You have your PDB mounted with your nylon standoffs. And you're going to have a small little gap here. That's going to be for the battery strap going under there. And in the meantime, I just like to put these nylon Phillips screws on. That's what's going to hold your flight controller in the future once you have that mounted. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is mount the arms. And for this, you'll need the bottom plate along with the arm. So let's remove all our hardware here. In the hardware pack to mount the arms, um, you're going to need, for the outside at least, you're going to need the 12 millimeter button head screws. There's two different sizes. We have 8 millimeter and 12 millimeter. So you want to start off with the 12 millimeter to mount the arms on the outside. And what I mean by the outside is these four screws right here on the very outside of the bottom plate. So what I like to do is I like to line up the arm. As you can see, this big hole right here is for the FC. FC um, button head so that way 
In the case of a crash or anything like that, you can just remove the arm without removing any of the hardware for the PDB. So let's line up the arm. We'll go ahead and put our 12 millimeter screw on the outside screw, like so. Next, we'll put our main, uh, main plate down. That's what it should look like. And then I'll just grab a standoff and I won't do a full tightening yet. I'll just kind of hand tighten it. And that's what it should look like. Next step, I like to grab the other arm and then just kind of push it in there and it'll lock in. Again, we'll grab our 12 millimeter screw. Push that in there. We'll just hand tighten our standoff here. You're gonna do the same for the back, same process. All right, so that's what it should look like with the four outside screws screwed onto the arm. The next step is you wanna grab your eight millimeter button head screws and those are gonna go in the middle to the press nuts. And that's what's really gonna hold your, your arms together. And the nice thing is with these press nuts, you don't have to have another wrench. All you need is this uh, standard 2.5 all right guys, so that's uh, what it looks like once you have all the screws set. So again, the outside screws are 12 millimeter, inside four screws are eight millimeter. Like I said, the nice thing is if you do have to replace an arm for any reason, all you need is a 2.5 and remove these two screws and the arm will just come off and then you can just put on a new arm and you're good to go. So next we'll install the camera plate and the top plate. When installing the camera plate onto your camera, you wanna make sure the holes align. Uh, if you do it upside down, you can see they're not gonna align. So just make sure you align them. Um, either side will give you more angle than the other side. So you can try one side and see how you like your angle. If you need a lot more angle, almost 50 degrees, you can flip it them upside down. So, and one thing to note also is when you put these on your camera, they are going to be a little tight. For that reason, it's if you crash or you're flying, your camera is not going to tilt down even if the screws for the camera come loose. So it is designed that way. So if they are a little tight, um, that's how they are. And we'll just line it up to the top plate. And we'll just install our 8 millimeter screws on the four corners here. All right, guys, so that's what it looks like fully assembled. Ready to go, all you have to do is install your FC, ESCs, motors, FPV gear, and you're good to go. So let's see, I'll show you guys the process on removing an arm, just so you guys can see what that looks like. So the event, if you do break an arm, um, we understand a lot of guys race and they're pretty hard on these machines. I mean, it's not surprising if something breaks when you're going over hundred miles per hour and you just hit a tree or something like that. If that does happen and you do break the arm, like I said, it's just two screws. So you just simply unscrew this. The nice thing is you don't need any pliers on the other side since we do have that um, press nut in there. It's gonna hold that screw nice and, nice and snug. Just remove the second screw. Once you have them both removed. Um, the nice thing is even if it is a little loose, it's not gonna come off in the air if the screws are loose just because that that button head right there is kind of holding it in so you kind of have to snap it off not break it off but just kind of snaps right off you can see it's good that it's a little bit hard to come off just so that way in the event they come uh, they come loose the arm doesn't come off in the air so there it is just swap the other arm pretend there's a new arm Put this back in here. If you find a really hard time putting the arm, you can loosen these screws up, but most of the time you shouldn't have to. Just put the arm back in there. And there you have it. So that's it guys, fully assembled X-Hover R5X. If you purchase the R5LX, it's the same assembly instructions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped out. And thank you so much for ordering this frame. We appreciate every order. If you guys have any questions, you can email us to support at xhover.com. As always, guys, thanks for watching.